Hi everybody, welcome. In just a few moments I'm going to show you some amazing techniques you could use to get the most out of some of our most popular products, i.e. some of our dyes, our stamps and our inks. If you've not seen me before, I'm a guest presenter on Creating Craft TV, I'm a studying watercolourist and artist and this channel is to help you at home um, learn some of the things that I've learnt along the way as well as develop on any techniques you might pick up on the way. If you are watching me through Facebook, please like and share. Um, what, uh, let me know what you're watching, what you're doing. Uh, put some comments on there. We'd love to know where you're watching from. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. It would be amazing. Um, we've already got over a thousand subscribers and we've only been going a matter of weeks. So that's absolutely amazing. So the more subscribers we get, the more it helps me to do more videos for everybody at home to learn new hits, hints, tips and techniques. <coughs> so how is everybody? Firstly, let me start and say happy Mother's Day. Great day. I'm a mum too, as you all know, and I've got my little uh, emoji stickers from my little boy this morning. He was very insistent that I wore them on TV today, so I have left them on. So if you're wondering what these little yellow spots are with all the funny faces on, these are a little gift from my um, boy this morning. So before I go any further, I just wanted to say thank you for creating it, sorry, for tuning in to Create and Craft uh, on Friday. It was amazing, but unfortunately I lost my second show on the Saturday due to um, sellouts. I am not complaining in any sense, but I do appreciate that people who've bought our products have missed demonstrations. So I thought I'd put on today for those people who have not got any special plans for Mother's Day. And as you all know, this video is always going to be available on YouTube. So if you're getting in later, share with your friends, let everybody know what's gone on and you can watch it this evening with a cup of coffee or a glass of wine if you're celebrating Mother's Day. So. <coughs> Before I start, I want to just go through a few of the things that I'm going to be doing over the course of the hour. And it's all good and exciting stuff. So the products that we are using, they are some of our earlier products and probably most of you have already got them. However, if you like what I do and you would like to purchase the products, I will give you the product numbers as we go along. So the first demonstration that I'm going to do is going to be using the paper piece die. And that little number that you can see in the corner there, 439640, if you go straight to the search box on our website and type that in, that will take you straight to this product. Then you can pop it straight in your basket if you'd like. But like I say, this show is not about um, a, sell a selling feature. It's more about getting the most out of stu the stuff that you've already got at home. Uh, because I appreciate a lot of you miss out due to the fast sellouts on Creating Craft. So the second demo, I'm going to be using some of our silhouette stamps. So you can see there, that's 438657, and that's an A5 stamp set. I'm going to be using that with our beautiful inks. And also 438651. So these are going to be on the second demonstration. And then on our last demonstration, I'm going to use one of my favourites. It's 404192, and this is a perfect stamp to colour with. I'm going to show you some techniques, again, using our alcohol markers. So when I put it out on Facebook last time, and I said to you that we would be doing some of the techniques, unfortunately, our last show had to be cancelled due to a few technical issues. So as it stands, I'm still going to demonstrate the ones that everybody's asked for. So I noticed that a lot of people had asked for demonstrations on how to get the best out of our paper piece in dies. So I'm going to use this one here, and this is the item number that I gave you at the start of the video. So it's this one here, it's, it's, it's a huge one, let me tell you. So <coughs> traditionally we've been putting watercolour washes behind and things like that, but I just wanted to show you something a little bit different today, so how you can get the most out of it. So that's one in the pack, so I'm just going to use my own, and I'm just going to run it through um, a die cutting machine. So I'm just going to do it in some white cardstock, so you can see how lovely this is. So this is the new snap machine, I've not had it very long and I got it for the studio. So, so far so good I would say, it's a little A5 portable one. I'm just going to run this through the machine. Now because this is quite a detailed um, die, you might need to run it through twice because of the intricate leaves on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through once and then I'm going to twist the plate and run it through again. 
So I'm keeping it exactly the same as you can see, but I'm just going to turn it round and I'm just going to run it through again. So I'm not going to move um, the die or anything. I'm just going to give it a second run just to get, make sure I get a good clean cut because the technique that I'm going to do next, it needs to be really clean cut, should we say. Did anybody get anything nice for Mother's Day? Um, I'm still um, waiting for my gift from my little boy when he comes back later, so I'm super excited about that. So, I'll just turn it over so you can see here. This is just a bit of scrap card to show you for the demonstration, but you can see it's absolutely cut beautifully there. So, all I would do ahead of time, or should I say I have done ahead of time, is I've popped all the pieces out. So, I'm just going to pop this to one side. And here's one I did before I went on to air. So this is one, <coughs> excuse me, I've still got the horrid cough that I had on TV the other day. So this is one where I've just popped all the pieces out ahead of time. Now traditionally in the past we've done watercolour washers behind there, we've put glitter cardstock behind there and I'll just show you one here. So this is with some glitter cardstock behind so you can see how beautiful it looks just with pattern paper behind. You know, it looks absolutely gorgeous. So. That is one of the techniques, and that is one of the techniques that a lot of people have been doing, including myself. So as you can see with this one here, this is one where it's just got a watercolour wash um, at the back. And then just the white cardstock's been matte and layered on top using 3D foam. So you could, excuse me, you just get a beautiful looking watercolour card. There we go. So that's what everybody's been doing with it, but we're going to do something a little bit different. <coughs> excuse me. So ahead of time, I went ahead and I cut the same die through some funky foam. Now, if you haven't seen funky foam, it's the like 3D foam. So it's about two, two mil deep is this one and it's got a glittered top. And I cut all the elements out and I've took them out of the cardstock and I've popped them on, on top of my work surface here. So as you can see, I'm just going to move them in shot for you so you can see them all. Okay, so paper piecing, we could paper piece back in, that would be absolutely beautiful, but we're going to do it with 3D foam to get a completely different look. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to keep the white card stuck on the card. So, here is a black card element, and I've popped a sentiment on here, and I've started to glue the elements in place. Now, if I was to guess, it would be really difficult. So, what I've done, I'll just move these out of the way is I got my um, element that I cut out and I've placed it on top of the card stock. Make sure I do it the right way, there we go. And I've sat it in place. So that was one that I did ahead of time. So I've got my like, um, what's the, my guide should we say. And then all I did was the elements that I've pre-cut out of some glitter foam is I glued them underneath. I'm just gonna place them back into place so just before I go any further, my um, glue of choice for this one, you need a really strong adhesive and the one that I've used um, on this one is the Ranger Multi-Medium Matte. It's super sticky and it, it really does hold. Now we all use glues across the market, we all have them for different things but for this type of thing, this is my preferred glue. So if you have got this one, that's amazing. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue behind. I'm not going to put lots on because I don't want it to splurge out around underneath the white, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to, it's like a jigsaw piece. It's, it is time consuming, but it's very therapeutic and the end result is really, really lovely. So I'm just going to paper piece that one in there. And I'm just going to get one of the other elements. Now I'm not going to do all of the flower, what I'll do is I'll do some of it and then I'm going to set it aside to dry because if you try and move this white cardstock now you will probably move the pieces. So we will do a little bit of it, we will set it aside to dry and then probably the finished card I will post on Facebook uh, later so you all can see the beautiful result that you get. So we'll just um, paper piece the rose element back into it although I am enjoying myself so we could be here a while.
you can see already the rose is just coming together beautifully so at home what I normally do as well is I've got an acrylic block here so to hold it in place you know so I know it's not going to move I place it over so it holds it in place whilst I'm doing it so I'll just get one of the other pieces of the rose Make sure you don't lose any of your bits. You know, when you run it through your machine, just be very careful popping the bits out. Because um, if you lose a bit, you're going you're gonna to have a little space. Um, so try and keep all the bits together safe. So I've just got three more little bits to complete this rose. Now, if you wanted to, you could cut it again in 3D foam, but in green. You know, so you get the leaves. So the, the, the flower head itself would be green and um, the leaf, sorry, the flower head itself would be red and then the leaves would be green. That would look pretty cool. But I, um, I know that a lot of you have got this dye because these have sold out so quickly on Create and Craft. I know probably most of you have got them, but I also appreciate we do have new viewers. So I hope you're liking what you can see. Now, I did say don't lose a bit, didn't I? So I'm fa thankfully I haven't. So it's a little bit difficult to get these pieces in place when I have a slight shake. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop the block on top. You can see it's already going to look beautiful. So whilst those pieces are dear, I'm going to set it aside. Then we might come back to it later and put the leaf elements in if we've got time. But if not, I will show you the finished card on um, Facebook. So when I cut that element out of that that sorry that die out of the 3d foam I used the um, waste of the foam and I matte and layered it onto this silver and black cardstock so you can see the waste from my original die cut I used and made a second card so you know that you know you're never going to get any waste so how beautiful is that one so this is obviously it's like an emboss and a deboss so this is your deboss element of it and the one that we're going to do where it's protruding up from the page is going to be like an embossed look so that's really really lovely so we'll set this one aside and we'll move on to our next um, demonstration so i'm just going to move this to the front so i don't knock it because it will be lovely when it's absolutely finished <coughs> excuse me <coughs> right so what we're going to do this time is we're going to move on to some silhouette stamping so ahead of time I wanted to show you um, our picture postcard and how you can get the most out of your artist canvas board which is placed inside so you will a lot of you will have heard me refer to the artist canvas board which is this one so this is where you would tape your watercolour card down or your normal cardstock and you would create a wash on the background. That is what this is for. And ahead of time, before I start the video, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> just one second. <coughs> Sorry about that ahead of time I have taped some cardstock to my artist canvas board now this is the cross stitch one which was on the TV the other day so if you manage to get this one that's brilliant so you'll be able to pop it on your cards and things like that so I've used some masking tape and I've just used some low tack masking tape now this is available on the website as well and when you um, tape your artwork down make sure you use low tack tape because if you don't what happens is when you come to take your art work off the masking tape will tear your card so just make sure you get some low tack masking tape to, t to tape your artwork down so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this in my Eureka and I'm going to turn my Eureka portrait rather than landscape and I'm going to pop my artwork inside I'm just going to make sure that the tape is stuck down so I get a beautiful border around my cardstock <coughs> so ahead of time I've picked three of our generation inks so <coughs> I've got a lovely orange, a lovely 
fuchsia and a lovely aqua green. These are ones from collection four and the two, sorry, two are from collection four, one's from collection three. So you can see there, these are 10 ml bottles and I watercolour with these all the time. They are super bright. So just make sure you give them a really good shake before you pop them in your wells. So <coughs> I think we will go from pink to orange to aqua. So I'm just going to pop a little drop in that one. And a little one in this one. And... Then a little bit of aqua in this one. So remember last demonstration that I showed you all, the wet on wet technique? So I'm going to use a flat headed brush for this one and I'm going to wet the cardstock and then I will pick up the colour and drop it in. Um, so I've just got some clean clear water and I'm just going to wet the brush and I'm just going to wet my cardstock so I get a nice shiny finish on my cardstock. So remember, this is just cardstock, so don't over-saturate. So <coughs> and here I have a pink, an orange and a blue. So I'm just going to pick up the pink part and I'm just going to do a few lines of my pink. Then I'm going to clean my brush. Always make sure you clean your brush because you don't want to contaminate your colours. And I'm going to pick up the orange. Clean my brush and pick up some of the aqua. And then I'm just gonna. So another technique for you is if you find your paper's too wet, all you need to do is dry your paintbrush and you'll make it into a thirsty brush and it will pick some of the colour out for you. So just tidy it off. And I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it out of my Eureka and I'm going to dry it off with the heat gun. So when you're absolutely happy, just make sure you always clean your brush before you change colours because you will end up with just like a, um, one colour or just going to another and you'll just create probably a colour that you don't actually like. So because this is normal cardstock you can see there we've got a little bit of texture down this side. Now <coughs> I explained this in my last demonstration, it is cardstock at the end of the day and this will happen but it does act add towards the end result so this is why I always still use cardstock because when you come to put your stamps on it's dim dimension without um, the effort really so you know if you like dimension in your cards and you like the little bit of rustic look then this is a nice way to go so Whilst this is, um, we're on the colour side of things and I have got some colour still left in my wells, I'm just going to use our splatter brush. Now these are available on the website as well. And all I'm going to do is, because these have got water in them already, I'm just going to pick a little bit of the ink up. And what will happen is the ink will go up the plastic bristles and it will gather in the end. And then what you do is you tap it on the end of your finger and it will put a splatter on your page. Now, if you do it light, you will get little ones like so. If you want big ones, you can do it like a flicking motion like so. Can you see that? So we'll do some of the orange as well. I'm only doing this simply because I don't want to waste the colour in my palette. So it is food for thought, really. Yet given your palette will get mucky, it can be cleaned, okay? So keep yourself nice and clean, otherwise you will end up with horrid prints and things. So I'm just going to move it out of the way, give this a wipe. And then we'll just blast this one off. Now this would look lovely in like navies and purples and things like that to create a night sky. 
you know, you do what you've got at home. If you haven't got our generation inks and you have got some watercolours of any form, just try the technique with what you've got in your stash at home. You know, the things that I use are just the things that I love to use. I understand that not everybody's got these things at home, but you will have something in your stash that you could maybe adapt or use, you know, for this technique. So fingers crossed I don't get an awful fingerprint on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the tape from around the board. So I'm just going to turn it over. And what, will should, what should happen is it should leave a lovely white border around your artwork. Can you see that there? So like when you're painting it and things like that, you're probably thinking this looks like an awful muddy mess. But it's not until you actually take the tape off um, and you get to see the lovely white border around your artwork, you think, oh, that is actually really lovely. So again, because we've had heat going on there, I'm still going to remove the tape really slowly because the heat might have um, activated the stickiness on the tape and it could still tear. So, you know, take your time with it at home. I absolutely love this technique and um, the board has been put in here for this very reason and we're looking at getting some boards for the big ones as well so you can do the same technique for your big ones in your big Eureka as well so if you've got both your Eurekas you'll be able to do the technique in both of them. There you have it look, look how lovely that looks. Now if you wanted to now pencil a boat in there and a sunshine you would have a sunset, a boat sat in a sunset. So down to your own creativity really. I get really excited when I see things like this come together because I know when people try them in different colours and pop them on um, the fan page, um, people will be like, that is just amazing. So let's get into some stamping then, the stuff that I really love. So I'm just going to take my foam mat and I'm just going to place it inside my tool and I'm going to pop my artwork back inside. And I'm going to secure it down with my magnet so it doesn't move. So we're going to use the silhouette stamps. Now it's this one that I'm going to use. Okay, and as you can see, these are quite tall flowers. So these lend themselves really, really well to like your C6 cards or your 8x8. So like creeping foliage across the bottom. Now I'm going to stamp these in black, but I'm also going to stamp them in a colour so it creates depth. So we have a foreground and a background. Okay, so just try and remember that, that they don't always have to be stamped in black. So in the background... Sorry, just before I do go any further, this is a card. Can you see this one? Karen made this one. And can you see that? The colours on the front there. She's done like a pinky and a green in the on the front. So it shows you don't, don't think that you have to do them in black because you don't have to do them in black. They do lend themselves really, really well to colours. And you can spritz them with water as well. Just because they're not a lamination stamp doesn't mean you can't spray them with water. So then, <coughs> I'm going to use... I'm going to use, for the background, I'm going to use this one in the centre. I hope you're really enjoying yourselves. And don't forget, guys, at home, if you've missed any of my previous shows, they are saved on YouTube. They will always be there. So if you're having a lazy afternoon, this afternoon, and you're looking for something to do, or you're looking for a little bit of inspiration, then pop onto YouTube and have a look what's on there, because there is some amazing stuff. Not only my stuff, there's lots of things on there that you could, you could see. I'm just going to take this magnet from underneath, because it's rocking. So I've just placed it face down, I've closed my door, and I've picked up the stamp. So because we've got some bright colours in there, I think we will go for maybe an orange. So let's ink it up in orange first. I'm just going to show you the stamp inside of it. So you can see. And then if we pick up the door, stamp it shut, this will look like it's in the distance. And so when we put our black stamps on it, the stamps will look like the foreground. Can you just see that one? That looks really lovely. So we're just going to do another one. We'll do one a bit further across. Again, same concept, so we'll stick with the same colour, or should we swap it out? Um, right, let's stick with the same colour because I think it looks lovely, so I'm just going to ink this one up.
and obviously if you do it the want and it's not quite dark enough the facility is there to stamp it again so if you wanted to because the plate hasn't moved because the magnet hasn't moved or your cardstock you have the facility there to ink it up again stamp it again and make it even brighter there we go look so you create depth straight away with just the same colored stamp so let's swap this stamp out for a different one in the set so this is the one that I used for the, that one and I think we should use this one next I'm going to use a few in here to show you that they all work really well together so we'll do this one in black This is really, in a sense, where your artwork comes to life. If you add black to anything, it makes everything else pop. So if you're matte and layering in cards and things like that, and you're a little bit lost, or you're thinking it needs colour, sometimes it just needs some black. Now, because I want that even blacker, I'm going to do it again. Now that just looks amazing, but I haven't finished yet. There is still some more I'd like to add. So <coughs> let's get rid of this stamp this time and we'll swap it out for another one. So I'm going to pop this back on the carrier sheet. And I think we will go for this little short one. what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of generation stamping with this one so I'm just going to pop it on there like that I'm going to close the door so I'm going to do the first one in a really dark black and then I'm going to move it but not re-ink it so I get like a shadow if that makes sense so but this time what I'm going to do is I'm not going to I'm not going to re-ink it I'm just going to pop it back down again pop it at the side press down and I will get like a lighter shadow can you see that there so we just need something in the centre here just to finish it so we'll just get rid of that little one there what we will do is we'll do this really big one We'll put him on a little bit of an angle as well because obviously weeds or foliage is never upright, just straight upright. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this in a colour as well and the orange first and then I'm going to move it and then in the black. Like so, and then I'm just going to take it off and just going to move it slightly over or slightly higher. And we'll do this one in black. I mm, want it to be a true black as well, so I've got quite a bit of ink on there. There we go. So if you wanted to create like some ripples and make this lower part some water, you could do that. All you could do is just get a, a finer, a finer brush, pick up some clean, clear water. And can you see this colour that I've already got here? You could just maybe do some lines. When you put it on though, don't worry that it's like it is. Get some water on your brush. 
check it out a little bit. And a great way to get some ripples as well is to add a white gel pen. Can you remember what I showed you in the last demonstrations? Just to make it more lifelike and it's not that they're not floating. You can see. So before I you can tell I'm having fun, can't you? I've got lots of things to tell you about. So I have got my white gel pen to hand. So I'm just going to show you how to create so it looks like there's light falling on the leaves of this. So can you see this leaf here? I'm just going to pop a little bit of a shadow on the top of that leaf. Just a tiny one. Can you see that? So it just creates a bit of light, it dries back lighter, remember always, things always dry back lighter. So try it, give it a go. So I'm happy with that one. So let's get a lovely sentiment on here, just to make it look even more gorgeous. I'm biased though, but I hope you, I hope you like it. Let's do this lovely one on here. So we'll just swap this one out. I'm just going to pop it in the top left. And again, we'll do it in a black ink pad. I'm sorry my head keeps popping in the way there. Uh, I will bear that in mind and not stick my head in the shot. I really, really do hope that um, yourselves at home are enjoying these um, live studio events. I absolutely love them. We worked really hard to do it for you. Um, we didn't want anybody to miss out. We appreciate you all spend lots of money with us here at Stamps By Me. So why should you miss out um, not getting the demonstrations that you need? It's not fair. And I know if I'd spent a lot of money with a company, I would expect something a little, little bit more. So uh, we are a family run business and we've put it together just for you at home. So if you have purchased our stuff and spent a lot of money, I really hope this is what you are looking for. You know, we do like people to tell us what they want. If they're struggling with products and things like that, let us know. I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of these videos with, you know, and I will dry up at some point, so I do like the fact that people do tell me, can you do this, can you do that? I mean, if it's something I can't do, I will be honest and tell you, I can't do everything. I am not good at everything, but I will do my best, and if I don't know, I will try and find out. So it is just a big thank you. And it is Mother's Day as well, so it's an added bonus. So let's put this to one side then. So you can already see... How lovely. So I haven't had hardly any wasted ink in there either. I've actually um, used most of the ink in my well. But I'm just let's just get this matted onto a card and then you'll be able to truly see what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to place this face down. Let's get some tape. <coughs> <coughs> so this is the, I like this finger lift tape. It's easier for me on TV. As you all probably know by now, I get quite nervous and I have a slight shake. I've got one now. I don't know why I'm nervous. but um, So the finger lifter really does help me. But you also know that um, I use glue as well because the tape does dry out. So if you want your card to last a lot longer than um, normal, then use a bit of um, glue as well. And if you're sticking onto things like glitter cardstock... Um, it will come away in a matter of about 24 hours from experience anyway so I would hate for that to happen to anybody that you'd done at home made a card for at home stick it down when you're happy just move this out so. there we go Beautiful looking card, little to no effort, so sorry. So you could, um, what's the word I'm looking for, batch, make your 
backgrounds, do lots of different colour backgrounds. You could even do bigger splashes on the background so it looks even more abstractive. So it's it's down to your own creativity really. Obviously we only have a short amount of time on here and I do try and show you as much as I can, but you having the time at home to do what you love and play, you'll probably find that you can get some great results and different different looks as well, you know, not just like mine. So that's demonstration number two. So are we all still on Facebook? Are we all enjoying it? Whereabouts in the world are you? Is anybody in the USA? Is it a little bit early? I think it's about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the USA. Um, if, you're if you're tuning in, that is amazing. Uh, if you've got any comments, we can read them now. As time goes on, we are progressing. We're learning more stuff and we can actually see your comments now live. So if you are commenting, drop us a comment. Uh, we'd love to know what you're all thinking or what you're all doing or have you done that card before? Did you like it did, or did it come out not so good like majority of my cards? So I'm just going to move this to one side. Oh, it's not finished. Could I just show you something really quickly? <coughs> so this card, we also have the matching die cut elements for these cards as well. And what I did was ahead of time, I cut them in black glitter cardstock. Can you see there? Absolutely gorgeous. So you've done a stamped background, you could then cut the die cut elements and stick them on top of the card to create depth, like so. This just gives some lovely dimension to your card, so it's not all just stamping, so you could move it, you could do whatever you want, you could just put one on there if you wanted to, take that one off, but I just wanted to show you them because they are really, really lovely cut out, they look like they're creeping across the bottom, so that's in black glitter cardstock but you could do it in normal cardstock craft colored cardstock and things like that so i'll not stick it on because i think you get the idea so then let's just get a bit of a tidy station it looks like our rose is drying beautifully so that we can do that one in a second so what i wanted to show you next was um on our last studio video we demonstrated how to do watercolouring, we demonstrated how to create a little bit of depth. I also showed you how to make white flowers appear white on white cardstock, so like white daisies and things like that by using a grey pen to highlight around the edges and colour in the centre so it looks like it's darker in the centre. <coughs> but what I didn't show you was how to colour a petal. Now I've chosen a stamp that's got quite a large petal, one of our stamps, and it's this one here. Now, let's just make sure it is the right way up so you can see it. So it's better to see it this way because this is how it's been put onto the template. So this has got lots of open petals in there and you can see it's got a bit of entangle in there as well. So this is one of our most popular ones and probably most of you have got this one. But I'm just going to show you how to create light and shade on one of these petals with some um, coloured alcohol markers. So going back to my dirty Eureka. So let's just get a bit of a tidy station here because I know what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to get a mark on this white cardstock. So before we go any further, what we need to know is the ink that we're stamping with, is it the right ink? So when we did our watercolouring, I explained to you that the ink pad that you would use, which is waterproof, would be your Versafine Black on its ink. This is waterproof. So if you are wanting to watercolour, um, and use fluids and things like that, it's waterproof, it will not move. However, because we're using an alcohol marker, my preferred choice would be the Memento. Okay, this does not bleed when you use your alcohol markers. Okay, so you just need to bear in mind that you have to swap out your inks for your different techniques and your different mediums. So this is not as bright black as a Versafine black onyx ink. However, because I have my picture postcard, I know I can repeat stamp until I've got it as dark as I really need it to be. So I have a circular element here, which I've just pre-cut and um, in a, with a circle die. And I'm just going to pop it in. Now, as you can see, it's bigger than my picture postcard, but it's okay. I am not overly concerned about it because it will still stamp perfectly. So... Before I go ahead and do the stamping, I'm just going to show you a finished sample of this stamp so you can see what it looks like. 
So this is one in red. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see that here. So I'm sorry it's stuck on a board, but this is for our, when we do our trade stands and things, we have to stick them to the board so we can adhere them to our stand. But you can see here, it's just been stamped out in black. I've coloured within the lines with a red pen, which is what I'm going to do now. And then I heat emboss the large sentiment, which also comes in there for flowers for you. So I'm going to show you how to create light and shade. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've got my black ink and I've got my stamp. <coughs> Excuse me. So this stamp, there is no right and wrong way. There is no upside or wrong side or sideways. You can pop it on your carrier, on your sheet, wherever you want. Now, this is a brand new stamp, so I know this is going to take a few times to stamp out. So I'm just going to pop it face down on the circular piece of cardstock. I'm going to hold my artwork in place. And I'm just going to use an extra magnet because that is a super sticky stamp. I'm going to pick up the stamp. So um, I'm just going to brush over the ink pad first. Sorry, I'm just going to brush over the stamp first. Because this is going to take a few times to stamp. I am experience of knowing this memento is not as bright black as some of the other ink pads on the market. But it, um, it's really good for your alcohol um, markers. see there I'm just going to do it again without my head in shot beautiful looking flower. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blast that off with my heat gun um, before I start to colour. No mucky fingerprints. So when I'm doing my alcohol marker colouring, I always pop a piece of scratch paper underneath because what will happen is the ink will go straight through the card and if it's sat on a non-porous surface, it won't suck the ink through. It will just pool and sit on your card. But because I know the paper underneath will pull the ink through, then it won't pool on top of this card. I hope that makes sense. So if I was to do it on like the clear lid of my Eureka here, and I did the alcohol through. Because this is a non-porous surface, it would just puddle underneath and it wouldn't come through my card correct. You'd end up with blobs and lumps and things on your artwork. So you need something underneath that's going to pull the ink through. So I'm just going to do it on some copier paper because we all know copier paper likes water. So I've gone ahead of time and got some coloured pens. <coughs> so I've got a couple of reds here. So I've got the Copic ones. These are... The red ones, it's uh, an R29 and an R37. These two will just stick with two for now. What I would say is um, they generally say that the darker the colours, the harder they are to do. Unfortunately, I didn't find that. I found the lighter the colours, the harder they were to do. Okay. Um, what I would say is have a play yourself and you might find the same, you might not find the same. But I found it well easier to do jump straight in with the dark colours. So always try them on a piece of scratch paper because the colours are never really what's on the end. So you'll get a true colour of what um, they are on the scratch. So as you can see there, that's an R37. And this is R29. There is a slight difference. You can just see it on there. 
So let's just see what this one is, or oh, R37 as well. So yeah, that's exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the R37 and I'm going to pick this petal here because it's a rather large one. So you can see how you're going to get the light and shade. <coughs> so the feathering technique, I talk about it all the time. So it's from the darkest part of the leaf or petal out. And all you're going to do is you are going to flick like just so the tip of your pen just touches the paper and all you're going to do is you're just going to flick like that. If you're heavy handed this is what will happen. It's just the tip of the thing you want just to touch. Can you see? So it creates like a little bit of a feathering motion. So I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to flick from that line there. like so. So that's created the back and then from the tip, if it suits you can turn it around and do it the other way or from the tip in. So when I draw these, the lines that I've just covered there, follow the lines, don't go in the opposite way to the lines, the lines have been put there for you to help you with your colouring. So I do that, then I swap it out for my darker one and I go back in and I do the darker one. And I could do this two or three times. I swap it back out for the lighter one. Then I drag that colour out. So I end up, in the end, with no white space. Then I go back in with the dark one. And I just build. And down the side, it would be darker anyway. Right, so, so you can already see a bit of light and shade in there. So let's swap on to a different one and I'll do it one more time. So I'll start with my lighter one. So we'll do this one here. And then from that tip in. Swap it out for the dark one. Remember what I said as well, it always comes darker. The alcohol takes time to evaporate. So if it's looking dark and ghastly, don't worry about it. It dries lighter. already see so what I was showing you earlier about the ink coming through it comes through the back and sits on the card so when you've finished it I'll just go back to this card you can get a, a, a good enough shot on this one here you can see how you can create the beautiful light and shade in there it really looks amazing and then going back to what I did on my previous video, if you want to make it 3D and pop from the page, just go around it with a light coloured grey pen. And you can get some truly amazing cards. And this flowers for you, the sentiment that is in there, that is also in the same stamp set. <coughs> and I will give you the item code for that one. Just a second. So that's the demonstration for that one. You can mat and layer it onto any cards or anything like that. You can put it onto some mixed media. I did do it on an MDF tag. So if you've got MDF in your stash, you can also use your MDF as well. So, but don't forget, you'll need to swap your ink pad if you are using a alcohol-based pen for a memento or an ink pad of your choice because you will, they will just bleed. So the item number for that one that I've just used is 404. 404192 and as you can see you get your flowers for you it's the big sentiment across the bottom if you're wondering what the little create and craft badge is on there that's because this item has been to create and craft so that's why I know a lot of you will already have this stamp okay um, if you don't if you see one without the create and craft badge that's just because one that we've done ourselves okay just in case you are wondering what that little badge is it means it's been to TV okay so let's go back to our lovely rose and see if it's coming together nicely because we are running out of time so this is a rose then that we did earlier and you know that I put my acrylic block on top okay so I'm just going to remove this the, the card and you need to do it carefully hold the um, foam in place while you remove the um, 
the paper take your time with it like I said to you it's like a jigsaw puzzle it needs it looks like it's stuck down a little bit there it has so it's not a problem okay so we've already got our rows coming together the white bits inside is just where the card has stuck to the black card stock but if you have got a rubber you can rub it away it will disappear but you can already see that can you see from the side you've got like a 3d embellishment on there doesn't that just look stunning um, I think we've got a couple of minutes so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to pop some of the leaves in as well can you see there so these little elements in here if you have a rubber in your stash just get within and erase them out and they will disappear and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the leaves in as well and what I will do is I will when I finish this I will make sure it's all glued and in place for you and I will pop a picture of it on Facebook so let's get a few of the um, leaves in place just to show you how lovely it can look just to finish it off really so first of all I need to find where the leaves belong so again I'm using the lovely glue that I showed you before put your little block on top just hold it in place <coughs> excuse me I'm just going to pop a few in because I really want you to see how gorgeous it looks finished. And this is the, a great way to get the most out of your paper piece dies. So I'll just grab a few more. Make sure I've got the right ones. I could do this all day I absolutely love this it's so therapeutic and the results are truly amazing you know you see a lovely looking card for your hard work should we say so I'll just do those few for now just make sure they're stuck and then we'll just remove this card I shouldn't really remove this until it's absolutely dry but because I want you to see the results I am going to pop that back down put that on for a second just while it adheres and then I'm going to show you what it looks like and you can see there I'm not going to lift it up because they will slide off but it does look absolutely gorgeous so if you have got some 3d foam um, knocking around in your stash then you can do this make sure you complete the full flower we know the flower is actually this big and I will complete it and pop it on Facebook and I will get rid of this ugly white in the center there but this shows you some of the ways and some of the tips you can tricks you can get out of your uh, paper piecing dies so that's the positive side of it and this is a negative so you know <coughs> two two ways to do it or if you don't actually like that kind of look and you want to do a watercolour wash background then the facility facility is there to do that as well so I hope this has helped a lot of people I hope it's been worth it and I hope um, you've learned something if it's just one thing I'm absolutely happy so um, I'm not sure when I'm back we have a lot going on at the moment with creating craft and things like that but be reassured that if I pick a day I will pop it straight on Facebook so you can all either save the day or pop it in your diary and tune in um, don't forget to subscribe that'd be amazing and I will catch you all later have a great Mother's Day spend it with your family stay cozy and stay safe and I will speak to you all later take care everybody bye